From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Wednesday, August 21st. I'm Abby Larico. When Missouri lawmakers expanded tax credits for donations to crisis pregnancy centers, they had certain services in mind. They said we envisioned people were going to be, you know, getting diapers, getting counseling, getting, you know, help that, you know, that they need in the state. But since the overturning of Roe v. Wade, those organizations are focusing on stopping abortions in neighboring states. That story coming up after the news on The Gateway. A St. Louis County man on death row for a crime he says he did not commit will get another chance to prove his claims. Attorneys for Marcellus Williams will be in court today asking a judge to throw out his conviction for a 1998 murder. They argue that new testing done on DNA found the murder weapon excludes Williams as the killer. This is the first time that St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell has used a Missouri law designed to give prosecutors the authority to reverse what they believe are wrongful convictions. Williams is scheduled to be executed on September 24th. The St. Louis chapter of the NAACP is urging federal education officials to look into the low reading scores of children in high poverty areas. St. Louis Public Radio's Lucretia Wembley reports. The NAACP filed a complaint with the U.S. Department of Education asking it to investigate low literacy levels in more than 30 schools in the St. Louis region. Chapter President Adolphus Pruitt says he wants the department to help schools boost literacy scores for black and brown students. He says both public school systems and charter schools could better serve kids. We have developed a uh, matrix of what we think all school districts are now and where we think they need to incrementally be over the next five years to solve this problem. He says the department's Office of Civil Rights should look into the disparity between how students in more affluent areas perform compared to others. I'm Lucretia Wembley, St. Louis Public Radio. The longtime leader of the Convention and Visitors Commission in the St. Louis region is retiring a year early with significant benefits. Kitty Ratcliffe is the outgoing president of Explore St. Louis. She will receive a year's salary in a lump sum and extra payments for bonuses she would have received. It totals more than half a million dollars, according to an agreement with the tourism agency. Ratcliffe will also receive contributions to her pension, health insurance for the next year, and the title of the car she'd been driving. She's leaving months after asking for more than $30 million in additional funding to complete an expansion of America Center, which already cost $210 million. Bob Wallace is a former attorney for Explore St. Louis and began as interim president last week. Ratcliffe could not be reached for comment. Both major candidates for Missouri governor want to boost pay for children's division employees investigating child abuse. Currently, the starting salary for investigators looking into alleged child abuse and neglect is around $44,000. Both Republican Mike Kehoe and Democrat Crystal Quaid say they want to significantly boost that figure if they're elected governor. Keogh says if he's elected in November, he'll push for sustainable children's division salary increases. Our most vulnerable citizens are our children, and so making sure that they're in a safe environment is uh, very much a priority to me. Quaid says the inability to raise children's division salaries is part of a broader GOP failure of managing state government. All of our surrounding states today pay so much more money for these individuals who are keeping track of some of the most important and vulnerable people in our state. I feel like that lack of getting that done falls into this larger narrative of these guys just simply not caring about government working. Children's division salaries did go up considerably during Governor Mike Parson's administration, but he's generally preferred across-the-board salary increases as opposed to targeting specific agencies. One of the highest costs of doing business is health insurance for employees. St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt reports on how one local company is working to reduce that cost for companies and provide better care for people. Healthcare is big business. The U.S. spends more than $4 trillion on it every year, according to the American Medical Association. At the same time, many individuals avoid care, fearing bills that could bankrupt them. Adam Berkowitz is the founder and president of Simpara, a St. Louis-based benefits consulting firm. He says his company helps on both sides of this issue by brokering direct contracts between employers and healthcare providers. In short, cutting out insurance companies and cutting out PPO networks that we're used to 
in exchange for transparent and fair prices. Berkowitz says this approach can eliminate out-of-pocket expenses for employees when they use a medical provider that has a contract with their employer. I'm Eric Schmidt, St. Louis Public Radio. Environmental Protection Agency officials from around the Mississippi River Basin met in Alton yesterday to discuss water issues. St. Louis Public Radio's Kate Grumke reports. Regional administrators met on a barge that has a floating classroom. They talked about the Gulf of Mexico's dead zone, microplastics, and forever chemicals in the Mississippi River. Earthia Nance is the administrator for EPA's Region 6 which covers the south central U.S., including Louisiana. Because the water doesn't respect state boundaries, we have to work together to solve it. Whatever gets thrown into the river upstream will end up downstream. The classroom is part of the Living Lands and Waters Mississippi River Institute. It will be in the St. Louis region through the fall. I'm Kate Grumke, St. Louis Public Radio. The Missouri legislature expanded a tax credit for people who donate to crisis pregnancy centers right around the same time that the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. The resulting prohibition of nearly all abortions in Missouri led those pregnancy centers to take on a new tactic, taking their efforts to other states. St. Louis Public Radio's Jonathan All spoke with Jeremy Kohler of ProPublica, who investigated how these taxpayer-subsidized groups are operating. I started to examine what some of the larger nonprofits in this program were doing with their money. It didn't take long to come across Coalition Life, which calls itself America's largest sidewalk counseling, professional sidewalk counseling organization. They pay people to stand outside abortion centers in Illinois and in Kansas and approach people as they enter for abortions or for other services and convince them to turn around. Um, and they say that they are successful often. They refer people back to their headquarters. They have a small pregnancy center in Maryland Heights um, with, with a sonogram room and a, a counseling room. And, and this is in the post-Roe era. This is how this group operates. Did you get any sense that anybody in with Missouri government sees that as a problem? To qualify as one of the organizations that can use the tax credit, um, can raise money with the tax credit. You have to certify that you're providing um, services that help pregnant women and families. The law doesn't specify where this is done or even how it's done. I did go back and talk to some legislators about what they thought the money was going to be spent on. You know, they, they said we envisioned people were going to be, you know, getting diapers, getting counseling, getting, you know, help that, you know, that they need in the state. Um, did not anticipate that groups would be going to fight abortion in Missouri's border states. Making sure that certain abortion rights are enshrined in the Missouri Constitution will be on the ballot in November. If that passes, does that dramatically change this situation? It may if it allows um, abortion clinics to reopen in Missouri. Um, if, if abortion is available in Missouri, I think this group would probably operate more in the state. It, it, it's hard to know. They, they have... Coalition Life placed radio ads um, trying to convince people not to sign the ballot um, that voters will vote on in, in November uh, uh, about uh, expanding abortion rights in Missouri. So their, their political activity on this they view as consistent with their mission and, a, and a, a good use of their money. And they acknowledge that they are subsidized by Missouri taxpayers. Does this mean that Missouri taxpayers may be paying for political activities by, by a group? Yeah, I don't see how you could not say that. Um, Missouri taxpayers are certainly subsidizing this group, which has purchased advertisements trying to convince people you know, to take a political action. So it certainly seems that way. Is it a substantial part of their programs? No, I, I don't know that uh, running a couple ads is, is going to cost them a lot of money. But um, it's, it certainly seems like if Missouri taxpayers are you know, subsidizing this group, and they have spent some money on political activity. When you contacted Coalition Life, what did they have to say about their activities and how it relates to the tax credits they're getting? They said, first of all, um, that they believe that they're spending Missouri taxpayer money in Missouri, that even though they may 
have employees in at five different locations in Illinois and in Kansas, um, that ultimately they are uh, largely helping Missouri people that are seeking abortions and referring them back to their headquarters in Maryland Heights where they have uh, a pregnancy center. And because their staff and their executives are all in Missouri, they believe that they are a Missouri nonprofit and that the money is being spent there. As well, they also raise money in Illinois and Kansas from people who can't get the Missouri tax credit. They have claimed that the Missouri tax credit is helping them operate in Missouri. That was Jeremy Kohler, a reporter with ProPublica, speaking with St. Louis Public Radio's Jonathan All. You can read his full report on our website, stlpr.org. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Abby Larico, and from the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. The Gateway.